All right, welcome to the Keep Show podcast, a college football podcast. Usually comes to you on Sundays. This is what we had this week. It's going to be a little bit different. We'll get you another episode early next week. I was in St. Louis for an XFL game Sunday night. Flew early to Orlando to meet the family for a couple of days at Disney. So my schedule was all out of whack. I couldn't squeeze it in. And then I just felt like I wanted to get that Auburn spring game out of the way so we could have our Auburn spring preview today and then go through what we actually saw in Auburn's spring game. So not going to go through a ton of news and notes. Going to spend most of our time today on Auburn and what we saw, what we think, and kind of where that thing is going to go. So before we do that, I'll tell you about our sponsor of the show, Wickles Pickles. We've always got them. You know we got them. Wickedly delicious. We love them. They are fantastic. We snack on them. We have them at the house all the time. We appreciate them for what they do for the show. We suggest you go get some, wickles.com. And you can have a drop ship there right wherever you are. Tell your grocery store if they don't have them, they need to get them. Wickles Pickles, thank you for sponsoring the show. All right, Auburn Spring Preview today. Here's the thing with spring practice and kind of where we are. This is not it. It used to be you finished spring football and you kind of knew what you had and that was going to be it. Maybe a freshman or two surprised you and that's kind of what your team was. Well, now it could still be really different. You could lose a guy or two. It could be brutal. It could just kick you in the junk. Or you could have a portal guy come into your team that maybe changes your roster and puts depth where you desperately needed it, puts you in a much better talent situation in a position that you are unsure of going into the fall. It can be very different. But what we know right now is I think there is some real reason for optimism around this Auburn football team heading into the summer, heading into the spring portal window, and then going into fall practice. Part of that is quarterback. I think Peyton Thorne took some steps through the spring. He definitely has room to grow still. But he made some progress. Uh, I think he's more comfortable with the system, more comfortable with the scheme, the terminology, the verbiage. And I think there are some players around him that are going to give him a little bit more confidence. Hugh Freeze taking over a little bit more of the offense, controlling more of the offense, I think will be better. When he had control last year, and I could tell when that was, things looked a little bit different. It was better in a more positive way. I think Peyton Thorne could be a good quarterback. I think Peyton Thorne can help Auburn win games. The problem will be Peyton Thorne's not a takeover quarterback. He's not going to go out there and win you games on his own. He's not putting the team on his shoulders. So he has to operate in a very consistent, very efficient way if this Auburn offense is going to go. Now, two of the big problems with that last year, the offensive line wasn't consistent, and the receivers did almost nothing to help out the majority of the time. Now it looks like you may have a couple of guys who can separate, one, a couple of guys who could help with contested catches, essentially be erasers, what I like to call them, and then have some catch and run guys. So your high percentage throws can turn into explosive plays. You're all looking for explosive plays. That's what we want. You want big plays, but you don't always want to have to throw the ball 50 yards down the field to be able to create those big plays. So we'll start with Peyton Thorne and what's going to be around him up front. That offensive line, I think, by the way, the backup quarterback situation, I thought Walker White, from an arm strength perspective, I thought he looked pretty good. I thought he looked big. He looked physical. But I think he's going to be way behind as far as the playbook is concerned. Um, as far as Hank Brown and Logan Garner go, I think they're pretty close. Um, I would imagine that one of those two probably wins the backup job just because of the knowledge they have of the offense, the terminology, and being a college football player. But I think Walker White's ahead of them physically. There, I don't think there's much question about that. But that will be probably the most interesting thing as it pertains to quarterback to watch from now until game one, because I think that's where the most unknowns are. And that is who's going to be the backup. And if something were to happen to Peyton Thorne, who would come in and what would that look like if they did? Uh, I don't think you're going to subtract some of the runs that Peyton Thorne is going to give you that you saw late in last season, because it does so much to the defense and forces them to play a different way. The visual deceptions that Freeze can add is going to give him an option to be able to pull the ball every now and then and make smart plays. But the receivers are going to help, and that offensive line is going to help. So we'll start there. Listen, also, I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on running back. We know what Jarquez Runner is. We know what Brian Batty is. We know what Jeremiah Cobb is. You saw Demir Allison with the nice little juke move in the spring game, making a guy miss. Like, that's not something that I think we're going to have to be, you know, overly concerned about. I don't think that's something that we're going to look at and say, okay, what do we have in this guy and this guy and this guy? Auburn's pretty much set. At running back. Also think tight end. Fairweather is going to be the dude. Like he was the guy as far as basically all pass catchers last year. Um, you know, tight ends caught nine of Auburn eight touch, 18 touchdown receptions last year. And that, that's, that's something that I think can still be solid. I think Fairweather can be your athletic pass catcher. I think Luke Deal can be a little bit more in line. Uh, Rico Walker 
in how you even truck the dude over there on the sideline. I think Mike O'Reilly is somebody that they have high hopes of potentially can help down the road. It's just not a room that I'm overly concerned about, although I do think you'll get more 12 personnel this year. So I think they believe that room can help this year. Uh, last year, I think it was used more as a security blanket and to help other things around them, widen the surface, give you more blockers, things of that nature. I think it can be used a little bit more as an advantage this year than it was last season. So running back tight end, I just don't think I need to spend 10, 15 minutes on that because it is what it is. Running back, really good. Tight end, pretty good. Neither a concern, neither a liability. Good numbers at both. Different style players at both. Both a plus heading into the summer and then heading into fall. So just not going to be an issue for all. The offensive line was an issue last year. What do you have this year? Connie Lou, apparently great spring. Loved what we saw for him at the, at the end of last season. There are folks that think this kid's going to be big time down and all. Um, understands leverage, understands how to use his hands, understands how to get leverage. And obviously the mental capacity is there because he's already played it, and handled it, and managed it. I think he's going to be the leader of that offensive line. And as a sophomore, second year player is pretty impressive. Uh, but that's not a, a situation that I think anybody's worried about. You got Tate Johnson behind it that has a little bit of experience. So you'll be okay then. Dylan Wade's down to guard. What I saw from him in the spring game, good with his hands. He's got good power, so he's going to live there. Uh, got to learn to stay a little bit lower. That pad level got high at times in the spring game. and something that's different at guard than tackle. So from what I've been told, some of the technique and fundamental differences, he still has a little ways to go with that. But you're getting a grinder. You're getting a guy that loves to come off the ball, loves to fire off, loves to push people around, and he's going to be able to help. So Percy Lewis comes in from Mississippi State. And I think this is a young man that a lot of people, like I said before, we talked about him as just a transfer. They feel like it's plug and go, starter at left tackle, everything's going to be great. Wrong. He's got some work to do. Physically, is he imposing? Yes. Technically and fundamentally, is he ready to be a really good tackle in this league? No, he's not. He needs to change his body. He needs to drop some weight. He needs to add some good weight. He needs to get stronger. All these things would help him be a better player. It's just going to be up to him how much he wants to put into that and how much he wants to do it. If he does some of them, I think he could be a solid tackle on this offensive line. But he's going to be the guy because there just aren't many other numbers there. The one that you would watch out for would be Tyler Johnson, a kid that played one year of high school football, 18 years old, probably not really ready for it just yet, uh, but made a ton of progress in the spring and could end up being Auburn swing tackle, which every team's got to have a guy that can fill in a tackle, not very few teams have a backup right and a backup left. It's usually just one guy who can kind of do both. The depth's just not that good at that position. But Xavier Miller, too tall, he's doing fine over at right tackle. He'll be the guy there. And the best news for Auburn this spring, I think maybe outside of what we're going to talk about with the receiver position, specifically Cam Coleman, and not a lot of people are talking about this, but there's something that happened up front with Auburn in this spring that I think is absolutely massive. And it's a guy that I've talked about before. It's a guy who I really like. It's a guy that I think can be massive for this football team, and that's Jeremiah Wright. Apparently, he has put a lot more into things mentally, emotionally, learning the plays, understanding the plays, knowing the calls, getting his body right. His focus is at a different level right now. And this is a guy that can throw people around. He is a legitimate bouncer on the football field. And if he can put all the other parts of it together, he can be a dominant guard. He has all the makings of being a dominant guard in the SEC. But mentally, emotionally, physically, all that has to come with it. And it sounds like he's getting closer to that. Did a couple of nice things in the spring game from what I saw. I think he's going to be a guy that really helps this offensive line. So if you're solid at center, you're solid at both guards, and you're solid at right tackle, and Tyler Johnson's kind of coming on, Regardless of what happens with Percy Lewis, all of a sudden the O-line's in pretty good shape. Good gripper tight ends to help. Multiple backs to be able to help. Now you have the beauty of formations on your side. Motion backs out of the backfield into the backfield on your side. You can run some two-back, 12-13 personnel. You can do a lot of different things to keep defenses on their heels. More good news for Hugh Freeze and the Auburn offense. All right, prize picks. Got to tell you guys about that. Get in on playoff action. Went up to 100 times your money on prize picks. Then you, the world's best players, take on the game at a new level during basketball's postseason. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with basketball, hockey, all different kinds of entries today on prize picks, America's number one 
fantasy sports app. Price Picks has some for every sports fan. Basketball, hockey, League of Legends, everything in between. You can pick LeBron, Caleb Clark, Connor McDavid, whoever you want to go out there and try to win big. Price Picks the best way to get in action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Price Picks even offers insurance for injuries so that your injuries stay in play even if one of your players were to get injured. For basketball games, you have a player who exits the game in the first half, doesn't return in the second half? Well, Prize Picks going to have your back, not count that as a loss. Simple to play. I can make my picks, submit my picks, and entries less than 60 seconds, guys. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stab types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. So it's real easy. A couple of different ways to do it. Download the app today. Use promo code CUBE, C U B E. For your first deposit up to $100, Price Picks is going to match it. Promo code CUBE, go to the App Store, search Price Picks, use that promo code, put 100 bucks in, you got $200 to play. It's really easy. You can do that. Go check it out. Go get played today like I have. Find Price Picks in the App Store. Use promo code CUBE, $100, they'll make it $200, you can get played today. So if the O-line takes a step, the tight ends are solid, and the quarterback is better, the quarterback doesn't need to be great to go win games. They know they can run the football. You know, I think that's why in the spring game, you saw the emphasis on the passing attack and the RPO game, wanting to go out there and kind of see what they had, where they were in live competition, especially in front of a crowd. So now we get to receiver, which is different. Plain and simple. It is a different room. Uh, Cam Coleman's real deal. And it's not just because of the spring game. It's because of folks I've talked to. It's because of physically how imposing he is. He's ready to go and should be a factor, a real factor in this Auburn offense this year. He's going to be a guy that makes things different. He just flat is. And not right now, buddy. I'm going to get to you in just a second. Sorry, my son has his Jedi uh, crystal uh, fortune teller box that he wants to tell me about. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. Nonetheless, when you think about this receiver room last year, it was a liability. It was a problem. It won't be that now. And everything I hear about Cam Coleman as a teammate is positive, is good, is that he's ready to go, ready to roll. And all that also is going to be on Auburn's side. We also got to see Roberts. We also got to see Robert Lewis, the Georgia State transfer in this game. A leader first and foremost. Some of the things that I've heard about him going up to the coaching staff and making comments, making suggestions, holding himself accountable, holding others accountable. This is one thing that that room has to have, and I think he's going to bring reliable hands, but also big with catch and run. You saw Cameron Brown have a couple of nice plays with catch and run. Something Auburn just didn't have last year. Did not have the ability to take high percentage throws and turn them into bigger plays. These two could potentially give them that this year. Also, I think Bryce King is going to have a chance to give them that. I don't know if he's going to help a ton, but he has the potential to and has the speed to be different than anybody else on that roster. Um, I mentioned Kendra Brown had a pretty good spring. Sean Jackson, the, the receiver from Cal, former quarterback, super twitchy, could also help with that catch and run stuff. Could be a bit of a gadget guy. I think he's also going to help. Perry Thompson, they're anticipating coming in and helping, not during the spring, but he's someone who's going to come in and potentially help. You still have Jay Fair. You still have some other numbers on that roster at a receiver that potentially you're going to be able to help. So now maybe a Coy Moore could get back out there. He's been dinged up, but he could also add somebody else that's a little bit of a veteran presence that could help. Bottom line is this room is different than it was a year ago. And depending on just how different can probably depend on how far this offense can go. Can the defense be able to keep up with this offense? That, I don't know. And I don't know if it's going to look much like it did a season ago. All right, Blue Delta Jeans. You know, Blue Delta Jeans, the best fitting denim you're ever going to come across. I love my Blue Delta Jeans. They are comfortable. They are dressy. They are comfortable. They're casual. They're fit to me. And now they can do that digitally. BlueDeltaJeans.com. Go check them out. Tell them you heard about them right here at Cube Show. Nick and the guys are going to take great care of you. If you're in Oxford, Mississippi, you can have it done there. Grove Bowl coming up this weekend. Just go by the store. Check them out. They're in Augusta. The Masters this weekend. They're all over the place. Everybody's buying them. Everybody loves them. You only need a pair or two. And there'll be any occasion. Dress it up. Nice dinner. You can dress it down and go casual. Out to eat with your friends. Whatever that is, Blue Delta Jeans. The best denim you're ever going to purchase. I promise you. Great gift. Mother's Day, Father's Day coming up. Birthdays, graduation. 
gift card for Blue Delta Jeans. You've got those to go. BlueDeltaJeans.com. Check them out today. We'll start up front on defense. Keldrick Falk, you saw him in this game. Big, physical, long, has added good weight. Has added the kind of weight that you want him to and looks more like an SEC defensive lineman. Played good football towards the end of last year. And now a guy that could be a rep. My description that I have got from Keldrick Falk and how he was in this spring was that he was a problem. Heavy-handed, strong, play the run better. Just a guy that is going to be an issue for SEC offensive lines. Amaris Williams, the freshman off the edge, apparently had a good spring. A guy that they think is going to help. A guy that has heavy hands and a guy that's been great around the locker room and around the facility. Just a really good kid, but also a good football player. One of the few freshmen we'll talk about that legitimately could help this offer defense this fall. Um, also on the defensive line, Jason Jones, some of that inconsistency is just still there. He has every making to be a great SEC defensive line. The length, the hands, the power, the build, it's just got to start coming more consistently if he's going to be a dominant force, and he hasn't shown that just yet. Uh, Jalen McLeod off the edge. Barely didn't block him very much this spring. So I'll make some plays in the spring game. Uh, Apparently the leader of the defense right now. There's a couple guys that are stepping up in that department, but he is the guy on that defense, playing better against the run. He's focused on that more. Uh, my understanding is he's working his angles a little bit better. He knows he's not going to be able to take tackles and tight ends on head up, especially with double teams, but working on different leverage points and different ways to use some aggressiveness against that to be able to operate in a better way than he did a year ago. So I expect a pretty good year from him. Probably the best pass rusher they have on the team, so they're going to need it. They're going to need guys to be able to get to the quarterback. Gage Keys, solid, solid spring for the transfer. Um, Tro Carter did some decent things, flashed a little bit, but not a wow spring as far as from what I've been told. Um, I think a couple other guys up front that maybe could help. Uh, Malik Blockton did some good things, and somebody that if he comes around a little bit more, possibly could be of assistance. But I'm worried about the numbers there. Would not be surprised to see Auburn go to the portal for a D tackle or two, but join the club Auburn because it feels like everybody's going there. That's why you're already seeing some big names there because the D tackle market is going to be legitimately out of control this next portal cycle. So the linebacker, I think it could be a really strong group. Eugene Asante saw him in the spring game, but we know what he can do. Like we, we know what he's capable of. Uh, the guy's all over the place, plays like his hair's on fire. It's exactly what you want out of an SEC linebacker. And, and, I think he can be every bit of an all-SEC linebacker this fall. If Austin Keys is healthy, his physical presence has been different this spring. A guy that people just say physically can be dominant at times, but he's just got to be on the field. Availability has got to be something that's there for him. Um, the Dorian Mouse kid from Tanuk, I think I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, don't really know, had a good spring. Say he's going to help. Say he's going to be a guy that can be of assistance and someone that's going to play and give you some good numbers there. DeMarcus Riddick is a linebacker, another one of these freshmen that apparently has come in and done some really nice things in the spring that's going to be able to help. Also keep in mind, some of the structure will depend on, I believe, some of these younger players and what they do and how much they can contribute. Because DJ Durkin is probably going to base it out of the four-down look, but he's going to be multiple. He's going to play some three-down. He can play some three-three-five. He can play some three-four. He's going to play a lot of different things because my place in 4 2 5 because he's got numbers at different places and he's been asked to play different things so many different times during the course of his career. He can essentially run it all. So that versatility could be critical, one, due to lack of depth in certain spots, and two, if some of these younger players step up and you need them on the field, you have the ability to alter your defense to be able to play more snaps. So they all could work out. Um, I also think that. DJ Barber's a kid that flashed in the spring. Um, Demarcus Riddick can run. DJ Barber can run. Like this is this is a younger group that has a chance to be solid, but they're not going to have to play a ton because of the guys are in front of them. As long as they stay healthy, might not need them as much. I expect Barber and Riddick to help on teams pretty good bit, and then you might see them in some games that could do some good things. Secondary was solid last year. We know that. Caden Lee had a good spring at safety. Colton Hood had a good spring at corner. Um, Anthony Champ, apparently leadership, kind of growing, taking that thing to the next step. Uh, Texas transfer Jared Thompson, though, has apparently been the guy on the back end. Vocal, outspoken, apparently guys listen. He gets their attention, accountability with his teammates, something that's been big. And this is somebody who comes over from a, another massive football program, so understands how everything operates and works. 
but is doing the things that Zion Puckett apparently did a year ago. And that's good news from not only his standpoint, but Jay Lou McLeod, like we talked about, Connor Lou, like we talked about. You're seeing, like a Robert Lewis brings that in through the portal. Very rarely do you get the portal guys who come in and kind of take over these big leadership roles. Well, oftentimes those alphas are already set on the team. Auburn didn't have a ton of that last year, something they were missing. So Auburn provided opportunities for some portal guys to not only come in and play and get snaps and have production both offensively and defensively, but to step into leadership roles. And a couple of the guys have taken that bull by the horns and are going to be able to provide that for this team this year. It's one thing I have a little bit more optimism about now than maybe I did before spring with what this Auburn football team potentially is going to be. I think you should feel good about that. Um, but this apparently, this Jared Thompson kid will confront you and let you know that you're not doing it right and you need to do it better. It could be somebody that's going to help. Um, Keontae Scott, we know, is going to be back. One of my favorite DBs in the league last year. So he'll be solid at safety. Antonio Kite, somebody who I think the athleticism is there. The fit for where he's going to be on this defense, probably kind of still looking for that just a little bit, trying to figure that one out. Um, Champ Anthony. Another guy that apparently has been solid from a leadership perspective and has really kind of shown up and done some good things. So I think the secondary, from what I understand, everybody feels good about it. And that's that's hard to grasp right now because there's so many guys gone. We haven't seen a ton of them in action together. So I, I don't know. I don't have the confidence that a lot of other people that are close to this program have with the defense. That's okay. It's just that I haven't seen it, and I usually gauge what I buy into based on what I've seen. And I I don't know 100% what the structure, how it's going to operate, how many young guys are going to contribute. I don't know how the depth is going to be inside, which I feel like you have to have in this league if you're going to be solid. You think about a team like Georgia that was literally dominant in almost every facet last year, they didn't have good numbers there. It caught up to them. It didn't cost them a ton of gains, but it made them more normal than what they were in previous years. So uh, I just don't know if Auburn has that guy inside. The one guy that you had from last year is going to be gone, and that was Marcus Harris. So I think with how much depth you have at a lot of spots, improvement that some guys have made, big gets in critical positions should give Auburn fans optimism going into this season. It should make you feel pretty good about what they are and what they potentially could be. Um, Cam Coleman was what we needed to see in the spring game. Uh, I think I saw enough of Peyton Thorne with what we got late last year and what I saw in the spring game and in the spring of how much more detail-oriented he's getting, how much more comfortable he is in some of the things he's going to be asked to do, which is going to lead to more offensive success. Also, I think when you look at the offensive line and how it's been bolstered, those are the two big question marks offensively. Defense, got to get to the quarterback. It can't just be Jalen McLeod. It can't just be Keldrick Falk. Got to find other ways. And Eugene Asante, we saw him pressure a little bit in the spring game. He was a guy that added some things. And then there's the guys like Camden Brown that could step up. Sam Jackson made a couple of nice catch and run situational plays in the spring game. Robert Lewis was big. Uh, I'm just kind of going down my notes here the spring game that I had of what I like before we wrap it up. Um, Kay and Lee had the nice play in one-on-one pass defense down in the end zone. So you know, Robert Woodyard showed a little bit of run tackle. Like he can get to the perimeter linebacker. So I mean, Jared Thompson had that blitz off the edge. It wasn't picked up, but like, he kind of showed you he can be versatile and do some different things. I just think there's a lot of reason for optimism, but that's like maybe eight wins optimism. Nine would be a godsend in my opinion. So feel good about some of the things that are there. Doors open for some guys to come contribute that maybe didn't a season ago. But some of the some of the areas of question, I think, have been handled and managed fairly well by this staff. And they look pretty good in the spring game. So that's kind of our Auburn spring review preview. Uh, we'll get to Alabama early next week. Probably going to drop that on Monday or Tuesday. So I kind of make up for this weekend's because they have an XFL game in San Antonio on Sunday. So we'll kind of drop these in weird spots back to back, and then we'll keep rolling team spring previews out uh, for the next month or two. Blakely's bouquets, they can get you set. Now, you heard about it around Easter. Now, spring is here. Wedding season coming up. Graduation. Whatever you need flowers for, they can help. They've helped me with a lot of different occasions. Great people. Wonderful selection. They can do it all. Shelby County, Jefferson County, and Birmingham. They'll deliver all over the place. They make it easy. Subscription service coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Also, then get your Mother's Day orders in now. You don't have to worry about it. Get that set up and get it ready to go. 
all your floral needs, blakeleysbouquets.com or call 205-579-4900. Blakely's Bouquets right there in Homewood, 205-579-4900 or go to blakeleysbouquets.com. So appreciate you tuning in. Please, if you're watching on YouTube, go subscribe. Close it in on 10,000. Trying to get there. Been working on it for a while. Like, rate, if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify. Thank you guys for all the support. We always appreciate it. We'll be back with more next week.